let's talk a bit about chain of command, shall mm. we? Because that turned yes. 29 today. That's another thing I have not seen in a very long time, but it stayed with me. And half the time when I reference chain of command on the seventh rule, I'm wrong. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about like best of both worlds. I'm like, that was a chain of command, right? And it's usually best of both worlds, but I get those. I know which one's which, but the second episode in chain of command was really interesting because it kind of gives a lot of us a, a, a gateway, a, a doorway to, to look at what gaslighting is, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that guy is gaslighting. I mean, there's that, oh there's gosh. that line at the end that Picard says, where he says, you know, for a moment there before, when the guards were going to get me, I actually believed I could see five lights, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's really yeah. awesome. I don't think it's the anniversary of that episode yet, but that's just the, mm -hmm. the part that stuck with me. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> Next <laughs> week. <laughs> anniversary, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah that, well, part, that was like my first intro to like, torture and television yeah. i was sheltered mm. y'all i was tom's the tank engine and blues clues so this happened <laughs> i'm just sitting here i'm like i just saw patrick stewart without a shirt on is he naked like, without an anything on yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> the thoughts the that run through your head as a kid but like that was a lot to process as a kid but they handled it so well it was easy to ingest yeah the I kardashian really bringing his kid to see picard like that too is like oh yeah. Ooh, it was very, yeah, yeah mean, it was very like talk Nazi Germany-ish. Mm, yeah. <laughs> talk about talk about culture shock. Yeah. You know, the, it, oh my gosh, the yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Could I you remember imagine if they bring her Bell back Massette? in Picard? That'd be cool. Oh, they could bring her back, and she could. <laughs> There's gonna be a fan fiction written about this. <laughs> was, what was the girl's name? Was it was that Massette or was that no? Massette, that was from a different else. one. Okay. Uh, Someone will remember for us. Well, that was was still Mark Alema. Oh, right, mm. back in Next Generation, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so we so they're noticed. They're talking about the uh, the butt stuff in uh, the butt live chat. Yeah, we definitely saw some some Picard <laughs> butt cleavage. That's the only mm. time we see some Picard butt cleavage. It's maybe even a little more graphic was... when he goes to Riza, but that's a difference. Yeah, yeah. that's different Riza. Out. You expected in Riza. <laughs> but yeah, it was a really good moment when. He, the the gull brings in his kid and he says oh but human parents don't love their children the way we love them like that's that cuts oh deep gosh. right there oh my gosh it, it's gosh. Sick. it's so twisted and sick and i love it in a <laughs> demonic yes. way yeah huh? uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't happen way. yeah it doesn't happen in modern television you wouldn't see that mm -hmm. in a in a current tv show like maybe mm. some of the darkest stuff but like yeah, maybe like game of like, thrones you know it would happen yeah. there you can see We're what's his name ramsey bolton Trek. doing that <laughs> yes yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah. But, but it's like but it makes sense to push the envelope like that especially with a species that is not human we we gotta think of these in terms of they're not going to have the same values as we are <laughs> you know Good point. they're they're exactly. not gonna look at at life the same way that humans do and in, even yeah. humans don't look at life the same way as each other you know mm. so exactly how okay. they don't love their children as much as we do <laughs> that's true those <laughs> yeah. guys it's Genuinely, uh, for me with sci-fi nowadays it's like a you know exactly like the the comparisons are very blunt this was a more elegantly sewn one where it's yeah. like you know people in humans on in this in this world say oh this country doesn't love their children the same as we do and this and this and this but they put mm -hmm. it in an alien envelope so it made it easier for everyone to Suggestible. see it and then you can translate right it. exactly right right this is the beauty of star trek uh, mm -hmm. And the people in the chat, uh, mm -hmm. like Peter H. and Chuck A., remind us that it was David Warner, uh, and the character's name was Gold Madred, not Masset. Madred. Madred. <laughs> yeah. You know what I just remembered, actually? When I went into, uh, when I took an acting class, uh, theater acting, that was my first monologue was Gal Madrid when he's talking about how he cracked open an egg when he was a starving child 
And he says, you know, and I, I ate that egg much in the same way you just did. And I saved the others, you know, and it would keep me alive for another week. But then the big boys beat me up or whatever it was. And I just remember that was and 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 my teacher huh. thought I was the weirdest guy. <laughs> and he's he's probably right. Well, but, but it's a good, great monologue. Yeah. I mean, that's what wow. I thought. But yeah. everybody else was doing monologues about like whatever. I don't know what I didn't know anything. I was a first year guy. But they looked at me like, oh. what the is this guy talking about cracking eggs open and being an alien? We just are trying to this do weird, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, like you guys need but, to educate yourself. I translate. I mean, hello, Victor Hugo. And, and, you know, th- th- there's stories like that of, of, you know, scrounging for food and not having enough. And then yep. all of a sudden they, you do have plenty, you have more than enough. And, I, I don't see why that's so weird to digest, but it's just because it's an alien. <laughs> I don't know. Wait a minute. We're forgetting the most important part about chain of command. Edward Jellico. Oh, yeah. Freaking Jellico. I hate him so much. The greatest <laughs> captain of all time, right? I mean, I... you guys were oh. doing the best first officer, but if we were doing best captain, I don't even think we, we'd have to eliminate him. Otherwise, it wouldn't be fair, played by Ronnie Cox, right? Everybody would be like, <laughs> Edward Jell, very, he was very right. Very rarely will I admit oh, to wow. hating something. I he did get the Anatoya uniform. We'll give him that. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough. But I hate him. get Troy into a uniform, yes. Which was great. <laughs> the one saving grace. <laughs> you guys know, and go back and watch it, but when I first saw that episode, back whenever it was, when it was in syndication, uh, I noticed that he, the the actor, theoretically, Ronnie Cox playing uh, Edward Jellico, made a mistake. He kind of like lost his line and they kept the take. And every time I've ever seen it, there's <laughs> no doubt in my mind that because he does a thing. It's when he's walking with Riker and he's telling Riker, you know, I want to switch to a you know, a four shift rotation or something like that. Right. And mm-hmm. he goes like this and they're walking. And of course, you know, poor guy, you know, it's not easy to come in on Star Trek and learn all this lingo and do all this stuff. And he's walking and talking. And then, and then it's right when they stop, you know, they stop and he turns to Riker to, to finish what he's going to say. And he kind of goes, boom. And then he says the line, like he, he definitely oh, no. forgot the line <laughs> thought and was like, wait, 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 here it comes. There it is. And he even has his hand like that. And I'm like, they kept the take, but he clearly forgot. You got to go back and watch it. Oh God. I, I hope I'm not the only buddy that noticed that, but it's, it's, it was love after that. I love them forever. <laughs> That's funny. It's more human. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Live Taspa medallion says that's what it was. Yes. Uh, okay. Any other final thoughts on chain of command? Cause that's man, that is another one I've got to see again because yeah. that that's one of the best ever top. Would you guys say top 10 uh, next generation episodes? Totally. For content. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh yeah. Top five. I have a weird top five, so I don't know. <laughs> It could be that I have a top five. (laughs) I don't know if it's tough because does it take two slots? Like, if it takes two slots, I'll say no. (laughs) No, no, it's just just one. Okay, then that gets it's pretty great. It's there's some pretty good stuff in there, especially between Picard and the Cardassian. Oh, okay. This is a challenge, you guys. Our good buddy War Dogheim out in Montana says. That's a Ronnie Cox mannerism. The whole pause, like he's he's trying to sell it. Like he's saying, no, no, that was an actor's choice. <laughs> you guys, we have to watch this and put this to bed because there, there's definitely he's going to be some people that are going to say, no, 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 that was just him acting. But I, I, I'm sure of it. We're going to bring him on the show and ask him. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm too scared of him. <laughs> He'll eat me for lunch. <laughs> Make you wear a uniform too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. You're not dressed appropriately. 